first financial transaction ever was, was one village sort of bringing their chickens over the hills to the other village and trading them for goats. And I remember that. Both villages, were you there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, but like both villages kind of being a little bit upset that they kind of got ripped off and really their chickens were worth more than the other side's goats and, and things like that. But the, the reason that I think that the first financial transaction was something like that is because the, the history of money has just been the history of facilitating exchange, right? So from the beginning, what, what we call money has been a way of, 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 of talking about whatever it is that is used in, in that society, in that culture, in that community as a means of facilitating exchange. So it used to be straight barter. I'll do this for you, you do that for me. I'll give you this, you give me that. And then when trade got more complex and, and, and started being across borders and, and you, you wanted to trade things that were harder to carry than goats and chickens, they needed means to do that. So one of the early means was conch shells, which apparently is where the idea of shelling out for mm. something comes from. Or um, they used to pay workers in the salt mines in Mesopotamia in salarium, which was actually salt, and that's the origin of the word salary. Wow. And, and so all of these kind of historically, money was whatever people agreed was a legitimate, constant form of exchange. So we, we decide, okay, this much salt, you can trade for this much food, you can trade for this many goods and services, and by agreement, it works. And then they, they got into metals and precious metals because they were rare, and so they could agree, okay, this metal is worth this much. And then as time went on, the, the actual things being used had less and less innate value and more and more representational value. So now, e e even in the early 20th century, we had paper money, but it still was backed by gold. So you could still theoretically trade it in for this much gold, which theoretically had an intrinsic value, though it doesn't really, it's metal. That's where the word gold came from. <laughs> that is, that you're learning very quickly. This Thank is you. this is wonderful. Yeah, yeah. I feel good as a teacher. Yeah, um, but what what's happened is when most countries came off the gold standard, literally all that we were left with is money is an agreed upon means of exchange, a, an agreed upon means of facilitating exchange. But what's interesting is. We've got this entire financial system that's based purely on agreement, purely on theoretical value, purely on confidence that this will be honored and I will be able to take this piece of paper or this piece of metal or these numbers on a screen or this Bitcoin and trade it for a set amount of stuff or experience. Money's really good for that. Money has been doing that for millennium. But what's happened is, over that time, money has become something that people try to use for power. Mm -hmm. they, they try to use it for security. They try to use it for uh, esteem, for privilege, for... Um, Status. Respect. Yeah. You know, I have money, you know. Yes. Yes, love me. I was in your car. There you go. Thank you. Thank you for noticing. Yes. I, I thought it was very subtle. But, <laughs> but, but that, is, that is what has happened, is we have a society built around using money as an attempt to get things like security, like freedom, like power, like esteem and respect. But money was never made for that. Money actually can't do that. And in the next segment, we're going to talk a lot more about why it can't do that and where those things actually come from. Here's what we'd like you to do. Go, go into your pocket, or if not your pocket, you can go into your desk drawer. If not your desk drawer, you can go into your partner's desk drawer and, and, and take out a, a, a bill of, of, of whatever denomination you, you, you've got. But, but something that is, uh, in your mind, 
real money. And, and, and take a look at it and kind of, you know, you've got the nice pictures and it's got the things. And, and, and if you feel it, you'll notice it's kind of just paper, right? It's paper with ink on it. And then just, just start thinking about, yeah, but what could it do for me? Start thinking about, well, yeah, but this, this, could, this could buy me a nice, a nice lunch or this could, this, this could um, you know, start being part of my, my, my financial freedom fund or this could be, uh, I could use this to impress my, 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 my date or something like that. And, and then just go back to noticing, oh, it's paper, right? Just a, just a piece of paper. And then think something else about it. Think um, one of the things from, from when you looked at your thinking about money, well, it's the root of all evil. Yeah, root of all evil. My goodness me. In your hands is the root root of of all all evil. evil. Right? Right? And then just go back to paper. And and (laughs) what you start to see, or what most people start to see when they do this, is at some point you realize everything you think money is or does, you're projecting onto it with thought. That's the only way it can have any power at all, other than its representative value as a means of facilitating the exchange of goods and services. For, for this section, what we want to just give you is a very simple way of thinking about money, and that's money is a tool. Very straightforward, money is a tool designed to facilitate the exchange of goods and services. And as a tool, its value depends on what you're trying to use it for. So we, we were talking this morning, and over breakfast and I I grabbed a fork and I went, this is a tool and it's really good for eating eggs, but it's not so good for building houses, right? So the value of money depends on what you're trying to use it for. Try to use it for the exchange of goods and services, fantastic, nothing better. Try to use it for security, uh, a sense of, uh, you know, to be more attractive or any of the other things that we try to use it for, it loses almost all its value. Yeah, and it has almost an opposite effect. So when you read studies of lottery winners who were thinking, boy, if I just had all this money, all these problems will go away. But the studies show the opposite happens. They have new problems. So getting all this money to try to solve things that can't be solved by money end up with new forms of insecurity different weirder forms all my relatives hitting me up for money because i didn't earn it i won it in the lottery and now i changed my name yeah what's it to you right it's nothing to you yeah it's nothing i didn't earn it so i need to give it to you and it becomes a nightmare and lottery winners change their names they go into witness protection they finally they over 70 percent say they wish they hadn't won so that's experiential evidence that this fantasy if i had more money all these basic things would get better in my life turn out turns out to be the opposite of the truth and it's important to know that because when there's an awareness of that then we can move on to creating money making money in a way that's a lot more lighthearted, a lot more common sense based a lot more fun and a lot more effective there, there's a, a, a prayer I've been told is, is big in, in AA by, by, by some of my clients in recovery, who, and, it, and it essentially goes, you know, dear God, I know that money won't buy me happiness, security, and, and, and well-being, but please, God, let me find that out for myself. And, and if you're thinking that, if you're kind of going, well, yeah, 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 this all makes a lot of sense, but I still like a lot of it. Well, we will be talking in the second part of this program about the best strategies we've learned over the years on how to make money. But we don't even want to go there as long as it, it still seems in any way to you that money is going to buy you happiness, that money is going to take the burden off your shoulders, the weight of the world off your shoulders. Because what we found is that as long as people are chasing safety and security and survival, with money, it, it tends to go really badly. And I'll, I'll, if you don't mind, I'll share, you know, when I first went to Steve, uh, my, my problem wasn't that I, I didn't know how to make money, I was really good at making money. My problem was I, no matter how much I made, 
I was always running scared and so I did kind of stupid things with my money and I was continually, no matter how much I made, I always spent more of it. And I didn't understand the dynamic. I knew it, 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 it just wasn't healthy. And I remember Steve asking me in our first session, I don't know if you remember it, but um, he said, because you were asking me questions about, well, how much do you make and this and that. And he goes, well, why do you want coaching on this? And I, and I said, I feel like every month I just make it to the end of the month by pulling a rabbit out of a hat. And, and I, I, I would like to have some degree of reliability in my income. And, and the irony being that I learned that rabbits live in hats. The, the, the very creativity of being able to create something from nothing is at the heart of making money. And, and we're going to talk more about that. But the reason I bring that story up now is because what Steve actually showed me and what we'll be showing you throughout this program is that I had money confused with oxygen. I, I thought money was the thing that I needed to stay alive and that if I didn't have enough of it, I would literally die. And it really felt like that to me. That it, it, Logically, I knew that couldn't be true. Morally, I didn't like that I thought that, but boy, did it feel like that. And, and what I remember was you just repeatedly would say to me in various ways, you know it's not oxygen, right? And I go, yeah. <laughs> and, and I didn't. But eventually I came to see that what keeps us alive, what makes us come alive, is nothing to do with how much money we have. But it turns out to be a lot to do with how much money we can have. Here, here's your first piece of homework. Here's your first experiment. I'd like you to pause the video and I'd like you to go through and make a list of all the things that you hope or wish or think having more money would do for you. And then we're, we're going to share some of the most common answers that we get when people do that. And, and we'll go through and, and, and kind of give you a simple, a simple way of sorting between is this something that money actually can do, that money is good for, that forks are good for, or is this something that might be a wonderful thing to have, but actually money is a, a terrible way to try to get there. Thank you.